Alrighty, folks, you know that we bought a place in Vegas. You know, I'm looking to set up a new buy box, looking to make some investment decisions out here. Been waiting for the Vegas crash because the crash bros told me one is coming. Why don't we bring back a legend, Brian Lebo, who helped me buy this amazing home and is your agent to the stars. So, buddy, I, I'm looking forward to the data. It, Vegas has got to be crashing because, what, 8% rate, 7% rates? Oh, yeah. It's got to be over. <laughs> Service-based economy, nothing happening here. Uh, so it's time to go shopping, right? Yeah, I mean, Vegas is crashing and everyone's moving to San Francisco now, right? Yeah, yeah. everybody's going <laughs> to San Fran. I love California. It's my favorite state. Yeah, they're, they're, they're keeping us employed very well. Yeah, Gavin Newsom is the number one realtor for Vegas. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, if I could vote in California, I would reelect him <laughs> over and over again because he's very good for our economy. So uh, so catch us up. We we haven't talked about Vegas specifics since we closed, uh, which is three or four months ago. So what's going on? Transactions, activity, price points. You have this great breakdown by price points. So uh, love to see what's really going on in Vegas. Bring yeah. us the truth. So uh, if you guys are familiar with me, then you know if you're not familiar, uh, I do high-end property tours, but then I also do a monthly breakdown video. So uh, I go over all of the analytics that is facing the market but then i also break down those analytics because a lot of times they're empty calories meaning right. just because the statistic exists doesn't necessarily mean that it's indicative of where the market is or where the market's going and that's basically where we're at this is this was one of the most bizarre video updates that i've ever had to write to try to make sense out of what the numbers are showing versus what reality is reflecting so this is a great video for your audience because this is a really, really pivotal moment in time where the market has already moved, but I don't know that it's necessarily going to be reported for like another month. So that's, let's, that's let's, why I, I love what you do. Again, you've been doing this for years. I've looked at your data. You've been nice enough to share it with me and you are in it. Your data history and experience, you're going to know stuff months before it's reported out to the average person. That's why you're on the channel. That's why you're going to see the crash come first or what might not be a crash. So what do you got, brother? So <clears throat> on my channel in December, I was telling everyone, I'm, I think it's the time to buy. It's the last chance to potentially get a deal. I remember. But I think going into this year, it's going to potentially get a little nutty. Um, in no, in October, November, December, I was telling everyone that I think rates will break below 6%. The moment that happens, that's the catalyst that's going to blow the doors wide open. Now, of course, a lot of people, you know, called me ignorant and thought I was an idiot. And, you're a real, you're a real estate agent, dude. You're biased. You're biased. Yeah, that's yeah what, no, that's I'm a greedy doing. realtor. Yeah. When, yeah. when I say buy, I'm a greedy realtor. When I say don't buy, then uh, yeah, I'm You're still an idiot. a realtor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, but um, but yeah, I've got a long track history of you know I'm not always right, but uh, yeah, more than you got, not. you're batting average. Yeah. You're in the Hall of Fame for sure. So uh, so anyways, I digress. Um, getting back to where we're where we are, um, like I said, there there's a disconnect between what has happened and what's happening and the news and the media typically reports what had happened when i was saying interest rates were going to drop everyone thought i was crazy and then two weeks ago fannie mae i think it was january 18th came out and said we think rates are going to break below six percent so they did by the end of the year yeah yeah so i got some validation again i, I never said this is exactly going to happen at this moment yeah. in time versus that moment i'm not uh a powell so here's here's what's so weird okay so when we look at this month's numbers, remember that the closings, the median price, that's reflective of homes that went into escrow 30 to 45 days ago. So we're basically, we're reporting on old news, right? Yeah, we're, we're reporting December um, pendings or yeah, escrows. Yeah, closing. so like figure like, you know, what, what closed in January was mid-November, and December escrows. That's basically mm -hmm. what we're talking yeah. about. And of course, that's the slowest okay. time of the year going into January. So suffice to say, here is where the dichotomy begins. So oh, from no. a sales stand, yeah, this is, again. I feel this setup. I feel this setup. It's I, a big I, I, setup, man. It's a, it's a it's big covered. setup. It's a big setup. Because again, you can report this one of two ways. It just depends on what narrative you want to spin. Mm -hmm. So okay. 
from a sales perspective, we sold 1,263 homes. That means nothing to your audience unless you have Without history. Yeah, you need no. context, right? Mm -hmm. So that technically was an 11% increase over January of 2020, uh, 2022. Yeah, 2023, sorry. Yeah. But here's the thing, 2023 sucked. Sales no, that's were a, yeah, that was, we were December, January, December 22, January 23, February 23. That was the little window where real estate just shut down. Yeah. That little three and month window. Yep. January of 23 was the worst singular month in over a decade. Yeah. Over so, a decade. Yeah. So we were up 11%. That's good, but not when you're comparing it to the worst yeah. month, like basically in history. Like I said in the video, it's like Trump bragging that he's three years younger than Biden. Like that's <laughs> technically it's true. true. It's technically true, but is it really something to really brag about? Like, eh, not so much. Yeah, he's five percent so, younger. He could do it in percentages. He's five percent younger. <laughs> right, than right, Biden. right. So on one hand, you could say sales are up. But realistically, the way I would look at it is really sales are still about 50% off of what we normally do. So 50%. 50%. That's amazing. Yeah. In 22, we did, I'm looking right now, 2,400 sales in January, and we did 20, uh, 1,263. So what did you do in 19? Because I know you have the data. Uh, yeah, I got it right here. So 19 was actually down. That was a rough one, 1,680. But I mean, even in a really bad January, that's still substantially more than yeah, what we just did. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. But I mean, so, 2020 before the pandemic was 2100. There you, you go. Know, 2100 in 2018. So we're always, we're usually over 2000. Either way you cut it, this is not anything to brag about from a sales perspective. Yeah. So again, now, if you were to say up 11% year on year, you'd be technically correct, but the context would still be out of focus. Right. I it's, gotcha. Exactly. So, uh, you know, for your audience, just like anything nowadays, you have to consider the source of the media and what mm -hmm. is the general narrative and is this reflective objectively or is this simply reinforcing a narrative that the article is trying to project very very important to discern the difference between the two now when we look at the median price this this is i really uh -huh. don't have an explanation for this one again we're talking median we're not talking mean or average so it is what it is, but pretty much every month last year, we saw major increases. We ended the year up 6.6%, .6%, which is incredible considering we had a year where sales were down like 60%. That makes no sense whatsoever. How are sales? Uh, it, it, uh, it does make sense to a guy like me who called the transaction crash and said prices were going up, but you know, that's okay. I, I got that right. <laughs> yeah. So here's the weird thing. Um, so last month the median price actually plummeted over seven thousand oh. dollars which wow again okay. i can't i can't really explain such a large drop well it's, let's let's play with that a little bit because i have yeah. i have a thesis but you're in the data yeah so what, i mean from a data standpoint it still puts us up 4.8 percent over the median price last, last january year. but right. tell me your tell me your theory so i this. think i think what's happening right now in most of the country, and I don't know if it's Vegas or not, this is why you're going to tell me is, what we have seen with the rates coming down a point, a point and a half for some, is it unlocked the first time home buyer a little bit, which would be price points below the median. We also have seen builders build smaller homes, right? So now you're selling, probably selling more condos and things of that nature. So what really happened is we unlocked the lower end, but the high end, was still kind of frozen, right? Let's be clear. The high end in, in Vegas is 2 million and above, in my opinion, right? Certainly sure. a million and a half and above in, in your right. numbers. And it's it's really going to be funny because I think that market unlocked in January, which of, of course won't be reported for another month. That's because again, we've, yeah. it's the stock market, right? It's the, it's the, it's the, you know, how do, it's the wealth effect. So I'm going to have a, just a wild ass guess that your January sales for, uh, or what will be February sales to January contracts, February sales will be disproportionately higher. So you may see this ping pong. That's just my wild economic guess. Love you, man. You, uh, you definitely are in tune with what's going on. Um, so, all right. So basically what we just discussed was, was the past, right? Mm -hmm. This is what happened in November, December, and it puts Correct. us in a position in January where sales are still miserable. 
and the median price is down 7,000. So yep. my guess is that you're going to see a lot of negative media yeah. articles in the forthcoming month talking about what's going on here in Vegas. What is, and, so what is 7%? That's roughly 2%. If you were to go month on month, you're down. Vegas crashed two percent month on month, roughly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, month over month was one point seven percent. Yeah. So if you round, you can round to two percent. Okay. Yeah. So, like I said, we just discussed the past. The reality is this: since literally the turning page of the year, I don't know what happened, but the phone blew up. It was like everyone finally dialed into the fact that they're seeing articles about interest rates, yada, yada, yada. I mean, going into the beginning of the year, it was just nothing but positivity yep. in various ways, right? My phone blew up in every price range. So, <laughs> so I'm out there, you know, doing what I do. And, and here's the difference is, Instead of reporting the numbers, I have the luxury of reporting what's actually happening. Actuals, real like, like real ground. time. Yeah. Yeah. And there, that's going to be delayed at least by 30 days by the media. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, I had a couple of clients. One was, you know, a follower of yours, a disciple. And he's like, yeah, let's get some deals. So passed on a couple of deals in December. And all of a sudden we got into January and just mayhem took over. Um, so I let's just say I wrote about 10 offers last month. I walked away from 10 offers because there was multiple offers on the table and my clients didn't want to capitulate. Out of the 10 offers that I wrote, only one property didn't have multiple offers. And that part of it is we snuck in there real quick. Every, every single offer I wrote except for one had multiple offers. I, I, this is what I'm screaming. This is, this is, dude, I've told people, and it's actually, you're the second person today I'm having this conversation with. Six and a half percent interest rate is the worst possible interest rate for the market. It unlocks demand and does shit for supply. Yeah. This is horrible. Bad. It was, it was pretty quick and pretty insane. Um, and again, this this took buyers completely, you know, out of left field. Where did this come from? You know, people that I was working with three weeks ago, it was like pretty much roll the red carpet out. And now all yeah. of a sudden doors getting shut right and left. Yep. So currently at the moment, here's what's going on. Um, let's talk about that inventory problem. So the the major catalyst that we're going to have here is what you basically just alluded to, which is supply. Um, right now, we are sitting at just under 3,400 homes on the market. We lost 10% of our standing inventory just last month. So to give you an idea, guys, to give you an idea, uh, in a typical oh. March or April, in a typical March or April, we sell about 3,000 homes. So it doesn't take a genius for you to figure out what's about to likely happen. We can't possibly sell 3,000 homes because we don't really have- You don't the have them to sell. Do. In theory, if, if everyone was willing to settle for what's available, we would eviscerate our entire market in like a five week span. Uh, yeah. which isn't going to happen because not every property is really no. able to be purchased. You got wish pricing, yeah. you got different conditions. Yeah, of course. But what's worse than that is because you got wish pricing and, and various issues with these properties, the problem that you're going to run into is out of those 3,400 homes, let's just say we've got maybe 2,000 that can actually really- Yeah, that's anything. reasonable. Pretty yeah. reasonable. So the problem is you end up with a ton of buyers that want to buy, but cannot identify a property. Mm -hmm. And then when you do identify a property, you get your ass whacked because there's five offers. And for a lot of these buyers entering the market, they don't, they're not conditioned yet to understand that like, look, it's, I don't give a crap what you just read. This yeah. is not what's going on. So m multiple clients of mine, I, you know, I had this conversation, I'm telling them, look, it's a rhetorical offer. You better come in at list price. Otherwise you don't even have a shot in the world. And then after a couple of times they're like, wow, like I really, not that I didn't believe you, but I just didn't believe that this could have turned so quickly. So then now you have all these buyers that after getting rejected two, three, four, five times, now they're like, all right, what the hell do we have to do to just lock it up? Mm -hmm. So 
it's going to be a really weird month where you're going to have buyers entering the market, reading the news going, oh, you know, prices are down, I can get a deal. They're going to have to acclimate and acclimate quickly if they want to succeed. Then you're going to have buyers that have been languishing for the last two months that realize the market they're in, and they're going to come in hard. So here's hard. Here's an anecdotal hard. story that I, I put in the video, Michael, and like I'll send you the I'll send you the listings, and th this kind of explains what's going on out there. I don't care if you're a first time home buyer. Obviously, that's a really, really tough market to oh, compete really in. Hard. It's been hard um, for a while. Yeah. It, and it's just, and now you're, it's, it's almost to the point where it is to the point where some people I can't actually help because yep. if you're a first time home buyer, you've got a minimal down payment and you're in a competitive area, like you're just not likely to win. It's going to take a tremendous amount of offer writing to luck out or right. you have to be immediate. So, yep check this one out. So I had a previous client call me up. Uh, I was in San Diego coming back and I'm like, Hey, uh, tomorrow when you fly in, we want to see this house, same neighborhood as our parents live in, yada, yada. So to be fair, it's a really popular 4,000 square foot single story floor plan in South Summerlin. It's by yeah. name. A lot of people know yeah. that floor plan. Yep. The Robert by Richmond American. If you have, I, 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 I happen to look at that one. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah. It's a great, great floor plan. It's great floor plan. Uh, so anyways, we go to look at this house. The house was listed for $1.625 million. And I, it I was know that nice. price point too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's a really nice home. Uh, the backyard was nice, but not amazing. And it was right. a fishbowl. You had five homes staring into your backyard. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, the exact same home was more upgraded down the street. And the backyard was like a $300,000 backyard. It was incredible. That one was in escrow, but they were only asking 1.55 million. So <laughs> quick math, the home that's already in contract was asking $75,000 less, probably got list price because it went probably. in like a week, yeah. but that's still a better home for 75 less. This home is either a hundred thousand overpriced or maybe $125,000 overpriced. Based on the on comp. You, yeah. Yeah. Depends yep. based on the comp. So I told my clients, you know, here's the deal. The market's pretty crazy right now. So on one hand, I wouldn't be surprised if a cash offer comes in tomorrow and this is done. On the other hand, it's overpriced. It does have a fishbowl effect. And I wouldn't be surprised if it takes a couple of weeks for the sellers to realize that they need yeah. to be a little more realistic. It's weird right now. So what happens? Uh, my clients decide that they want to write the offer. We go to write the offer. They got a cash offer at list price that night. So we're done. We're, we're blown out. You're out. We're out. We're out. You're, clients, you're a backup at best. Yeah, at best. We're And we're really not. So, all right. So we're out. That's crazy. Wow. All right. And it's cash. So it's going to close. Well, yeah. then a week or so later, the home that was listed for 1.55 million that, that went, turns oh. out that house sold for cash as well. It sold for 1.77 million. That oh. house sold... Two hundred and twenty thousand dollars over over list price with multiple offers and multiple cash offers. Ah, well, there so you go. So now it makes sense. The one point six two five actually now is actually a bargain. A deal. When oh. that one sold for one seven seven. So this just kind of I mean that's an extreme anecdotal story, but I'm telling you all over the place. It's list price over list price. Yeah. Give you a free lease back. Um, the market is is literally on fire and crazy. Well, so again, so, let me, let me ask you this question. So I just talked to Beth Traverso, who's a number one, top 1% agent in the country. She's in King County. King County's medium price is a million bucks. That's, that's okay. where she plays up in Seattle. Okay. She just told me that she is seeing the same behavior. No lie is Q1 of 21 waiving inspections, list yeah. price, 15% over. And here's the worst. This is worse. Folks, do not do this. She is seeing routinely 50 to 100 grand in EMD released on acceptance. I mean, that is bananas. Ultimately, you got to do what you got to do to succeed. I mean, when I've purchased properties in the past, I offer to release my earnest money just because it's a way to get what you need without it actually costing you more money. Uh, yeah, if you, know if, if you know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, if you know that you're qualified, it's easier on a cash deal when you're already liquid yeah. and the funds are available. 
Um, it's easy if you're an exceptionally accredited buyer uh, where it's a no brainer. I've got a, a, v, a senior VP for Oracle right now that I'm working with and the guys like it's. Let me guess, leaving the Bay Area, coming to Vegas. Leaving the Bay Area, coming to Vegas. Great, Shocking. great guy. Um, and I mean, you know, he could pay cash a million times over. So it's it's a tax purpose reason for taking a mortgage. It's a no brainer. So yeah, you want to release yeah. the earnest money? We'll give you the earnest money. Let's keep the price reasonable. And we're offering you effectively an insurance policy. But let me, but let me ask you this question. Yeah. In your market, it really never got to that point. It did in Seattle, right? Money? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. As, a, as, as a standard behavior. It, um, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say standard part of it is a lot but of, but it agents. happens. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was happening tremendously for me personally, when I am selling a property and I have multiple offers and I'm in a position of strength, I always demand that the earnest money is fully mm. released upon okay. expiration of due diligence. If it's cash or the appraisal contingency, which I make 14 days, right. basically the reason I do it, I think it's a great idea as a seller as a protection mm -hmm. sure is this um again it, it, it only works when you're in a position of strength because what ends up happening is you end up you end up scaring away a lot yeah. of buyers sometimes they're very qualified buyers when i feel that i'm in that position of strength i like it as a filter because right it 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 basically filters the weak and and the weepy yep. out of the equation. Yep. If you're and you only need one, you just want one. I just need one. And again, if if you're like on the fence, you don't know, you're out. If you're the kind of person that's going to try to hit me up for repairs and try to renegotiate, you're out. I want to work with someone who's ready, willing, and able, and committed to just getting this done. So right. in my experience, I've never lost a deal when the earnest money was released. Oh. Um, and then there's 400 level negotiating where on the back end of the equation, it takes away any ability to negotiate. So there's multiple reasons why as a seller, you want to push for it. It's just a question of, um, are you able to use here's, that? Here's the big question. I, I would argue that kind of Q1, Q2 of 2021 was the craziest real estate market I've seen for activity. Not a lot of inventory, lots of willing and able buyers, crazy low interest rates. I'm curious. Do you think there's a chance that Las Vegas could get back to close to that nuttiness, given what you see today in the data? I think that's really easy to accomplish. Will it happen? I mean, I could I could see it potentially just being rational. The 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 problem that you have here is right, like dealing with 2021 post pandemic. That was just a global event that disrupted every industry, top to bottom. Uh, again, the, the likelihood of that happening again, hopefully is is nil, just like the Great Recession, hopefully that's nil. The difference here is you can see like what happened after the pandemic, I don't know. I mean, I was wrong. I thought everything was going to crash and I was wrong. But I think 99.9%, .9 I don't know anyone who in the pandemic was like, oh man, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be great. I don't remember anyone saying real estate is going to go on fire as soon as we take our masks off. Um, but here, look at the roadmap and we'll get into the housing saturation by price range because that's, like I said, what narrative do you want to run with? Do you want to run with the narrative yeah. of the past, which is the numbers that come out today? Or do you want to run with the narrative of the present and where we're going that's totally subjective? I want to know where we're going, but yeah, th right. this, is, this is why your data is so important. And I so, love that you do it every month. It's awesome. So first we can talk about, you know, for the supply side, like we just did, we've got no inventory. And the problem is, is, you know, I had some people commenting, well, yeah, but all these people, if rates go down, all these people are going to sell. And I'm like, okay, but here's, here's the disconnect that you're missing, right? Is Las Vegas is unique to many cities in this country because we are the number one looked up at least destination to move oh, to for sure. currently. No doubt. Yes. So when you look at the ingress, people moving into the city versus uh, egress, leaving the city, it's it's like damn near like a two to one ratio. Oh, so at least about it, at least two to one. Yeah. So if you motivate me to sell my house finally, OK, but yeah. I got to live somewhere. So unless I plan on moving to Texas, unless I plan on renting, basically, I'm going to go absorb another housing unit. So. I sell. And oh, I there's out. There's also one other piece that is is unlike any other time in my 
20 or 30 years, there's going to be a lot of people that never thought about being a landlord, but because they have a 2% mortgage rates and rents are through the roof, it's a great financial move. So right. even for the folks that will move, they got a bigger job, they got this, they got that. There's going to be a lot of folks that used to be that qualified seller and sell to move. They're going to be like, screw that. I got a mortgage that's an asset. I'm keeping it. Right. And that's, I mean, anyone with that mortgage looking at current mortgages, it makes your head spin. So the problem, again, that you run into is if I sell my home, I'm going to buy a home. It's a net zero game. We didn't right. accomplish a exactly. damn thing. But the problem is for every one of me, you've got someone moving here. So if I sell my home and buy a home, it's net zero. They move here. We're down one unit. So there's not a lot of people that are selling Las Vegas and moving to someplace cheaper. So the problem is, how are you ever going to create more housing units? Yeah. We're building new homes, but we're also building expensive homes and yeah. we're nowhere near where we were building in like the mid 2000s. Yeah. So if you think that things are going to deviate from its course because we're going to add inventory, I think you're sorely mistaken. The other aspect, I don't know if you read the article, um, I think it was in CNN Business. I put it in my newsletter about boomers. This oh, was, yeah. I, I never... I don't, I don't know why I just never thought of it in this way. It's guys, it's a great article. Uh, I'll give it, I'll, I'll give it to you, Michael. You can post it on the, this. I would highly yeah, recommend everyone read this article. Uh, it's a great perspective on boomers refusing to leave their homes. Yeah. And typically the argument is boomers aren't leaving because they don't want to give up their 3% mortgage, et cetera, et cetera. This delves into other factors that you don't really consider. Like, yes, if they have a mortgage and they're going to downsize, <laughs> right now downsizing into a smaller home damn near creates the exact same payment it doesn't really yeah exactly Why? it doesn't make sense the crazier part which i loved 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 was the tax angle so yes. uh you guys probably realize that if you if you live in a home two out of the last five years you have a tax shelter of a quarter million as an individual now if you're married that tax shelter increases to five hundred thousand dollars yep so stupid math you bought a home for two hundred thousand dollars you sell it for seven hundred thousand dollars and you're married you sell the home you walk away with half a million free and clear you're good to go no do irs it. yep that the, that limit and rule was instituted in the early 90s guys <laughs> early 90s we're talking mm. 30 years ago look look how much housing has increased in the last five years and now we're talking 30. 30 years homes yeah. at least are twice as expensive so when you look at it uh most of these individuals who are now looking to retire and downsize they have tremendous equity and it exceeds that amount yeah so once again you look at it and a lot of people have a million dollars worth of equity well, so well i mean i'll give you a real life example olivia and i are one of those people right we happen to have a house in mountain view california that we paid 300 grand for rough and tough that's worth a hell of a lot more than that and our tax bill if we sold would be six figures. And we're like, yeah, we don't, don't need do it. it. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep it. Yeah. Got a low rate. We're good. Thank you. So that raises a question. If you want to motivate boomers to sell their homes, maybe we need new tax legislation that shelters that. Again, let's adjust. Whatever the median home value was nationally in 1993, maybe we need to look at. Yeah, I might want to adjust. Maybe adjust it by the same ratio. So maybe it goes half a million and one million. I know, you know, a lot of liberal Democrats are going to go up in arms because we're helping out the appearing to be wealthy, but a lot of these people are middle class and just stumbled into a good yeah, investment. They're, they're but, teachers, you know, cops, you know, yeah. but again, if you want to solve a housing problem and you want to create more inventory, this is certainly a way to create that inventory. So it, it just, it brings up a good discussion, but now We've already discussed what happened in Vegas. Now let's talk about where we're at and where we're going. So okay. we've already established that the housing inventory itself is depleted. And we've already established that it's very difficult to create inventory out of thin air if we don't motivate people to sell their home. What Michael was referring to earlier is I came up with a metric uh, during the pandemic because I wanted to see how different price ranges were performing as far as demand and just the overall, like how do you equate the demand that's out there right now, not just mm -hmm. necessarily in sales and in price ranges. So 
Um, I have housing absorption by price range. So the higher the percentage, the more competitive the market is. So let's take a look right now at uh, the bulk of the Las Vegas market, which are homes priced between 250 to 500,000. We already established the median's 440. The vast majority of our market kind of falls into this price range. Last month, this same time last month, we had 37% absorption. So a little over one out of three homes that yeah. you would look up on Zillow are under contract. In okay. one month, we dropped, we went up 9%. So right now, it's at 46%. In a month? In one month. Wow. So now about half the homes that you see on Zillow are already under contract. Wow. That's, that's, that's not, not to be understated. <laughs> that's, that's a dramatic good. jump. Now, look at this. When you go from... 750,000 to 1 million. This refutes what you were talking about earlier, Michael, with the, the higher propensity for first time yep. buyers. Well, that was true, but yeah. now all of a sudden you're seeing other people go, hey, it's time to jump in. Exactly. This is, yeah, okay, go ahead. Tell me the number. 750 to 1 million went from 24% last month to 33%. The same 9%. 9%. This is exactly what I talked about. Mar the market's up. The wealthy are feeling better. They feel it's time. It's so now let's talk, let's talk a little, little wealthier. A little wealthier. Oh, 1 million to 1.5. 1 million to 1.5. All right. This is it where was, I was shopping. This was this is Olivia right. and I. So this was 20% uh, last month. So one out of five yeah. homes. It went yeah, from 20 to 32%. 12% in one month month one month overall the entire market when you compress every price range into one category in one month it went from 32 percent to 40 percent so uh this almost, is a sign of what's to come so guys you're, dude your media price is gonna rip in february this is foreshadowing right here so at this moment in time almost half the homes on the market that you're looking at are already vaporized no point this is showing you where we're going. This shows the demand and the, the competitiveness of the market at this moment right now in time. The higher and more competitive this market becomes, the more you're going to see multiple offers over list price offers. So again, I don't give a rat's ass what happened in November, December. January 1st, everything just accelerated into a crazy direction. And we're talking uh, January is not the greatest month, right? No, it's not. So if, if we're seeing this kind of activity in January, you have to ask what the hell happens in March, in April. Well, and I'm really May. glad I bought last year. That's what I got to tell you. And what do you think, like with, with you buying a new home and getting incentives, do you think builders are going to be teasing rates and providing incentives? Because we're going to vaporize our inventory and a lot of buyers are going to have no option other than to just go get a new home because they've been rejected multiple times. Yeah. I've seen this cycle over and over again. That's going to put pressure on new homes, which means new home builders no longer need to incentivize in order to create sales. So again, oh, this is my worst case scenario. scenario. Oh. So we have no inventory. We have a very heightened demand, which is proven in housing saturation yeah. by price range. Yeah. And then that. The higher, it, the higher end is picking up which is what I feared would happen. And it's, it's just, people are going to be mesmerized that the median price pops. Because yeah. again, what we saw for the last six months is mainly the first time home buyers were getting re-energized, getting a little bit of activity going. But now folks, the luxury side is woken up. Right. And, and, and I'm telling here you, we go. Luxury, luxury is on fire. Uh, again, you know, like I said, I've got multiple clients that are moving from San Francisco Bay and we're talking high net worth individuals. Yeah. Um, it's, and again, across the board and price ranges is very competitive. So, and, and the part that a lot of people are missing is over the last two years, we disenfranchised a lot of buyers, you know, in 2022, exactly. we had buyers that didn't want to buy because the values were free falling. So who the hell wants to buy in a market that's continuously going down right. now in 2023, we stabilized and then we actually started increasing in values. But the problem was as we were increasing in values, we also had increasing uh, mortgage rates. So yep. again, buyers Double are like, whammy. Ah, I hate to like lose out on these price appreciation, but I'm not buying at 8% interest rate. So for yeah. two years, we've had a tremendous amount of buyers that are just sitting and waiting and waiting. 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 Yeah. And that's why and, that little window opened in, in December, November and December, and they jumped in. But if you didn't get a yes answer, 
The window's closed. Right. So, guys, this is why I tried telling you in, in October, November. Yeah, December, we tried. We tried. There was this window in, uh, in time where, especially, I say, my exact words, if you can suck up the current payment, you're better to jump in now and, and lock in a price yeah. knowing that in two years you're probably going to be refinancing yeah. anyway. It's a one-way bet, yep. yep. Yeah, you yep. wait for a better interest rate and now you're paying over yeah. list, you have appreciation. So it's it's that's why I said right now is a very peculiar time because the data it's is screaming. very deceptive. Well, it's very yeah. deceptive because the media is never going to no, publish they don't my go there. housing yeah. absorption by price range. They The media reports on what happened. They don't make predictions on what's likely to occur. Folks, the data is pretty clear. Brian, we, we might as well hit this topic at the end of the video. You were invited to the Vegas event I'm hosting to celebrate 50,000. It's obviously in your backyard, February 17th and 18th. You were invited. You wanted to come, but unfortunately, you're going to be out of town. So anybody looking to get a picture with Brian, he unfortunately won't be there, but we will miss you. Take a snapshot, Photoshop yourself right there. There you go. But yes, next I will time. definitely try next to make time. the next event because look, you got 50,000. You blew past me in short time. I'm sure we'll be celebrating 100,000 here really shortly. So I'll make sure I get to that event. There you go, buddy. I appreciate you. Thanks for everything. Of course. Thank you guys. Appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next one.